Um, so what the, what the viewer encounters uh, when they when they walk into the space is a uh, is two interlocking uh, highly polished brass rings that are that are connected. They're welded uh, through one another, um, and they just really simply lean against the wall. Um, and yeah, they uh, each of them has a word uh, inscribed or engraved into the material. On one, the word sleeping, and on the other, um, waking. And uh, this is, I see this as a sort of, um, as a three-dimensional diagram, really. So it's a three-dimensional Venn diagram. Uh, and yeah, so I guess what it does is it, it, su it, it suggests some space in between these two states, a sort of um, a threshold consciousness between sleeping and waking. And it points to this zone of possibility or un un the unknown. Yeah, I do, I absolutely have this interest in, in the kind of oppositional forces of, let's say, um, science and, um, um, and the unknowable through, um, uh, it, it's the unknowable through forces w which we, we, can't, we can't control. I guess the sort of rubbing up against one another of, these, um, of the knowable and the unknowable or, and you know the scientific and the or the rational and the irrational we might say is is is, um, is kind of alive and well in this in this sculpture in a um, in a spatial way. So it's something it, it tries to kind of give form to an intangible an intangible kind of like clash of these two of these two um, opposing kind of um, uh, moments. Yeah. The use of, the, of brass specifically was important to me in this work because I was interested in a material that's formed under, um, under duress in a way, under like extreme heat. You know, this, it's an alloy, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of homogeneously produced solid f um, material that's produced by the, um, under extreme heat where two metals are kind of co-joined or kind of come together in a sort of collision of heat. And so under this sort of you know, so it's a it's a material that's been through tr like transformation through um, uh, you know through uh, through an ac an action of ex extremity uh, through heat. I've worked in the past with practitioners of what I've what I kind of term other ways of knowing people that are involved in in fields of knowledge um, that that are esoteric in some way, be that uh, uh, you know witchcraft or shaman or perfumers. Uh, people involved in hypnotherapy, and, and working with a practitioner of, of this kind, is, I guess my initial my initial sense is that I could uh, you know call these people like you would a plumber and have them come and um, you know like fix something for you or you know realize something with you, but uh, yeah I'm always kind of being pulled into the pro into the project in, in a very kind of subjective way where um, both their subjectivity and mine are kind of in, co in collision. There's a really lovely kind of um, uh, way that I find myself inside these projects doing things that I wouldn't have ever anticipated myself doing or, uh, or learning or knowing um, be it you know be it through my having to pull my own biography into a kind of the making of a spell with a witch or you know calling upon my own ancestry to activate a, a space um, by you know by um, you know, with, with, a, with, a, with a shaman or, or, you know, deep analysis by a, um, uh, by a shaman of my, my time and date of birth in order for them to then spatially kind of configure something on, um, with me or on my behalf. The role of the imagination is, in, is important in, in, in the reading of some of these works that I'm producing because it, it's not only, um, say, the, the production of the work that um, that's reliant on a kind of sus suspension of um, expectations around uh, um, around the world and, and and let's say the physical properties of the world and how they work. So if I'm working with a with a shaman who wants to all of a sudden only communicate with me on the astral plane, um, I have to kind of deal with this as a as a uh, physical reality that I have to then kind of work from. So I think. The, the way that imagination is, is an active um, material in the work extends out to yeah, all these other ways of, um, or all these other kinds of other ways of knowing that I'm engaged with. So yeah, I see the hypnotic act as a kind of, um, as, a, as, a, as a state of consciousness that's, um, 
that's an opening up to possibilities.